and action. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm your host, Billy, and we have a lot of ground to cover today. So let me get the housekeeping out of the way. I can be found on Ravelry and Instagram as Billy Toy. I'll put it on the screen so you'll have the proper spelling. And I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. It should be in this corner. And remember, there are several buttons, uh, several bells rather, to select from. The top one is your best one because then you'll get notifications. And if you caught my last episode, we did the premiere while we were on with you, Patty and I. And I may do that again in the future. I thought it was really kind of a fun thing to do. And you probably won't hear about it if you don't get my notifications. Of course, if you follow me on Instagram, that's a plus two. So in a recent episode, I mentioned that I'd like to start a knit along. And I'll put a picture of the pattern here. It's a 1940s Sirdar pattern for a cardigan with a chevron design in it. A couple of people have already purchased it, but I encourage you if you'd like to knit along with us to purchase the pattern and go to the show and tell Ravelry group and just post there your intent so that we can start to chat about our yarns, what yarns we're using. Um, I'm looking at a start date of April 15th, so that'll give you plenty of time to figure out what yarn you want to use and to look over the pattern. But do go there and express your intent so that we can start to uh, bond with one another a little bit. Of course, I'm going to show you some of the knitting that I personally am working on. But before I do, I wanted to get a little nerdy with you for, <laughs> for a short while. I hope you'll indulge me. But I think it's very interesting. Let me share my screen. Hang on a second. So on the screen, you are looking at views of different type of common fibers used in apparel. And these are blown up through a microscope. This little symbol up here, this white bar is showing you for comparison purposes, what 20 microns looks like. That's a measurement, a, a very teensy measurement. Just to give you a comparison, the human hair is approximately 70 microns. And you know how thin that is. Some people have thinner hair or thicker hair, but roughly 70 for humans. So if this is 20, a human hair is considerably thicker than these fibers that we're using to knit with. Now, the first picture you see on the left, the one that's marked broad wool, those are not the wools that we knit with. Those are generally used for carpets because they're obviously very thick and they're quite durable. And then as you go down in micron count, you get to fine wool, alpaca, cashmere. And notice these are fibers that come from animals. And you can see that they have these scales, the scaly effect to them. That's what makes them grip, which is somewhat desirable when knitting. If you've knit with silk or linen, you know how slippery they are and you can see why there's none of that grippy scaliness in these. And then polyester, completely devoid of anything. So you're not gonna have very much give with this fiber. Kind of, you know, what you see is what you get. It's a little bit plastic coated, um, not biodegradable. It's gonna be on the surface of the earth for a very long time, probably hundreds if not thousands of years. Um, so 
I mean, a good steward of the globe, I, I would encourage you, if it's at all possible and practical for you, to try and stay with the natural fibers, which at least do biodegrade. Um, while we're on this topic, I got this information from the Walmart website. I believe they're an Australian wool maker, and I, I do want you to know that 90% of fine apparel wool comes from Australia. Now, the wool that some of us really love to work with, merino, comes in different grades, starting with 14 and a half microns um, and going all the way up to the, the broad wool. And even within Merino, there are different gradations. So you can have extra fine, a little bit thicker would be ultra fine. Then it goes up to super fine, fine, medium, and then you're into broad. So I thought this was a little bit sciencey, a little bit interesting. Um, and it also leads me into a topic that's pertaining to a trip that my husband and I took. And at the end of this video, I will show you some of our travel pictures. A couple of years ago, I guess it's about a year and a half ago, our son was finishing up his fellowship at Microsoft out in Seattle and we had a wedding in Vancouver. So we combined those two things with a cruise to Alaska. Neither of us had ever been there. And since we were in that part of the world, we thought it was a good opportunity. So I'll show you some of those uh, images. But one thing that I learned about that I had never even heard of was a fiber called Kiviet. And I'll put the spelling of it on the screen. I have a few more slides I want to show you, which really gets to an even deeper level of what these fibers look like on the inside. the delicate underwool of the Arctic musk ox. It's one of the most sought after fibers in the world because of its rarity, its softness, and its warmth. It's softer than cashmere and is light as a feather. It's considered an insulating fiber, very comfortable to wear in any climate, but that luxury comes at a pretty steep price, a small ball, 100 to 200 dollars. I didn't purchase any, mainly because I like to knit sweaters and to have a thousand yards of this to knit a sweater with was gonna be prohibitive. I think most people are using it for hats or scarves or smaller projects. But I did go into a couple of yarn shops to have a feel and it's super, super soft. During the course of the cruise, I had an opportunity to meet several other women who were sitting around knitting when we were in between our ports of call. And one of them might even be watching. Hi, Tracy, if you're, if you're here. Another interesting couple who we met over dinner one evening, they happened to be seated at the same table as us, was, believe it or not, a sheep farmer from Australia. Well, what are the chances? This guy was so hip. He wasn't a very young man, but his wife was one of the most elegant women I've ever seen. She hardly seemed like a farmer's wife to me. They travel a lot, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if she was buying her clothing in Paris or Milan. She had stunning taste, stunning clothes. Um, very lovely couple. And when I found out that he was raising sheep, I thought, oh, 
great. I have an in now. Forget my wool at bargain prices, but lo and behold, his wool is of the type that is that broad fiber, not suitable for knitting with. In fact, he ships all of his fiber to China where it is being turned into carpeting. So that's the uh, unhappy ending to a, what could have been a really happy story, but nevertheless, it was really fun. That's one of the joys of traveling. You never know who you're going to meet. In keeping with my theme of Fifi, finishing it first, I wanted to show you a few things that I have finished. Let me grab them one second. First of all, there's a balaclava that I knit for my son. And I'll put a picture of him wearing this whole ensemble. I think I had told you about this yarn that a friend of mine gifted me a couple of balls, just two balls of this colorway of a sock yarn, a Lang sock yarn called, I think it's called Super Socks. And I didn't think I was going to have enough to knit a scarf. Here's the scarf. Um, I had sort of finished it and my son said, but mom, I'd like it to be a little bit longer. So now it's plenty long. Even for him, and I'll, I'll put a picture of him wearing it. So I ordered additional yarn to make the scarf super long and I over ordered. I was afraid of under ordering because I was fortunate to find the same dye lot. So now I have this tremendous amount of yarn, what to do with it. So I knit him a pair of mittens. His hands for a guy, pretty dainty and he has a smaller wrist than I do. Um, there's room in here. This is not for my size hand, but it fits him great. And these are um, convertible. So he can flip that back if he wants to do something with his fingers. So here's my finished pair of, yarn, uh, pair of mittens. And the scarf and the balaclava. And I will put a picture here so you can see him wearing the complete ensemble. And yes, I still have yarn left over, which I probably have enough to make him a matching vest or maybe even a sweater, I don't know. He's got so much clothing, I don't really wanna to add to that. I am almost finished my Mademoiselle. 1951. Um, I think I had shown you part of this before, but I reworked it a little. This is one of the front panels and this little doobie hanging here, I believe is going to wrap around the neck. So this piece is asymmetrical. This is one of the fronts finished and I think I have the right size and shape to it. There's a second front panel. One goes over the left shoulder, one goes over the right shoulder. This is almost done. So they, they crisscross. Um, the other one will come over this, the one I showed you. This doesn't go all the way down. So right here, you're looking at the underarm and I started just today binding off this shoulder. And then both of those will match up to the back. The back is also finished. Um, what you see down here, this wide band of navy is the hand that will be turned under. And then the really interesting part of this sweater is the collar. So I think it's like this. I'm doing this like upside down and backwards. 
this piece, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that this will fold down and this will be coming across. It's going to be much more interesting when you see it assembled. The only, and the, the, both the sleeves are done, by the way. Um, you might remember me telling you that I knit one sleeve first to kick things off to make sure that this thing got well underway before I ran into any uh, possibility of getting bored. So here's my sleeve. The only thing that I'm not sure about yet, I just have this loosely basted up. I'm not sure that I have quite enough fabric in here. So I, I may have to rip this back and extend this a little. I have to see when I base it together if it meets the front and the back, but it seems a little skimpy to me. So that might be the only thing that I have left to do other than the final assembly. I probably will be finished with this before I start the uh, Chevron cardigan, but don't worry about me. I have several UFOs lurking that need to be worked on. So I'll always have something to do. Of course, the joy of just knitting mindlessly when I'm watching a movie is something I've really uh, gotten accustomed to in recent months. Um, but I'll have to pull out some of the things that are buried and try and finish them because I really, really am trying very hard to finish before I begin. My film of Countess Furness, I haven't touched since I last spoke to you about it, but it has been blocked. I, I blocked some of the pieces before I stitched them together. Um, Cause the front, the front has a different fabric than the back. And I wanted to line them up and get the shape of the dolman sleeve and all the way down the sleeve to be the same for the front and the back. So I, I did make a little bit of headway on that. I knew you were worried about me. I mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. Um, I would be very interested in seeing what everybody out there is working on. So please do go to the Ravelry group and show us some pictures of things that you're working on particularly if they're authentic vintage from vintage patterns. Um, but certainly if you're knitting something that's just vintage inspired or even non-vintage, I want to get to know my audience and like to be more in touch with you. So let me know um, if you enjoyed the chat session that I did with Kati, let me know because I think that that was fun and I'd be happy to do it again, especially if I knew that some of you would participate or more of you would participate. There were some of you last time around. All right, um, I think that wraps it up for this episode. And if you wanna stay tuned, I'm gonna show some pictures of our Alaska cruise. Bye now. See you next time.